what's up guys i just want to preface this video by saying if you happen to already have experience opening up gamecube controllers and you know what you're doing more than likely you're not going to find anything of value in this video this is going to be more of a tutorial kind of type video geared towards people who have never opened up a gamecube controller and or are too scared to because i don't want to waste your guys's time i'm just letting you know up front i do still have my video opening up a gamecube controller where i take most things apart this video is just more to highlight a couple things to look out for when you're opening up your controller. Of course, it's not a definitive guide, and if you guys have any questions that I missed, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm going to try to go over every single one that I can. So without further ado, let's talk about some common mistakes. I've witnessed my friends opening up their controllers firsthand. I've also heard of a lot of stories, and people have come to me with questions about certain things that they've encountered when opening up the controller. The GameCube controller is actually pretty simple to open. Okay guys, I'm gonna start off the video by saying something I've said every single time that I've opened up a controller on this channel. The two tools that you'll need to do just about anything you want to the controller are these two screwdrivers. I use this Phillips head screwdriver and this tri-wing screwdriver. Both can be found online for extremely cheap, although I absolutely love this tri-wing screwdriver. Just about anything that fits will work. So let's get into opening this thing. It's important to know that all the screws on the back are the same size, and the tool that you'll be using to open all of them is your tri-wing screwdriver. Now I almost feel like it's kind of a cheat to even say that this is a common mistake, but please keep track of your screws. They're all the same size, so it doesn't really matter where they go back into your controller, but obviously you do not want to lose any of them. Now, if you're able to see these screws that are holding these back shells in place, they are Phillips head screws, and you're going to obviously use your Phillips head screwdriver to open them. One thing I had to learn the hard way, however, is that if you are too rough on these screws, they will easily strip. You weren't obviously meant to ever get to this part of the controller, so I assume that the screws used here just aren't of the highest grade of metal. So just make sure that you're very, very gentle and that your screwdriver has a good grip on the screw before you just start turning your screwdriver. Now the way that the triggers are designed here goes with the board and this is actually the most common configuration you'll see. But if you have an older controller, there is a chance that the backing of your controller could look like this. The trigger is going with it looking like this. The interesting thing about these being that they don't use screws and that this little plastic shield piece is actually built in to the controller board, meaning you can't take it out. The reason I'm telling you this is just so that you know, anytime you see this kind of backing on a controller, it means that it is an absolute requirement that you have this piece on your controller's trigger as any other trigger piece will not fit. Now a problem my friend ran into when he opened up his controller and something I also ran into when I opened up my controller is having this little spare piece around and wondering where the heck it goes. Well, the simple answer to that is right underneath this trigger right here. These things can pop out very, very easily when you open up your controller, especially if you're opening up your controller to install Battle Beaver plugs. These little guys, which I also have a video on. Now the thing about these plugs are, when you put them in your controller, in the trigger like this, and you try to install it back into your shell, if you're not very careful, your rubber piece will pop out. When you install the plugs, you have to be very, very careful. You have to insert them back into the shell very slowly, but even once they're installed, if you press down, you'll notice it pops the rubber piece right back out. So when installing your Battle Beaver trigger plugs, you wanna make sure that you don't press on your triggers before the controller is closed again. All right, so that just about does it for the back part of the controller. It's pretty simple. When taking the board out of the shell, you wanna focus in on this here cable, which is going to be wrapped around this peg. Just gently force it up and take your board out. You can't really go wrong with your start and your D-pad. They're very simple. They're both just plastic pieces that are all the same shape and size across all controllers. So as long as you don't lose your little rubber pieces, you'll be fine. Now, when it comes to the A, B, X, and Y buttons, it's a bit of a different story. Depending on when your controller was manufactured, you're going to have one of two different button pads. Now, if you're ordering custom buttons online or if you're swapping parts between different controllers, you're going to want to pay real close attention to which button pad you have. The one I have right here is a button pad you'll find on newer controllers. It is considered the tall button pad. These are the more common of the two button pads, and the buttons that you want to pair with them are short buttons, which are also the most common. Now, this right here is the short button pad. One thing that gives it away is this little ridge that it has. Now, if you have the tall button pad, you want to pair those with short buttons. With the short button pad, you're going to want to pair it up with tall buttons. If you're, for example, buying a pair of buttons on Battle Beaver Customs, 
system's website, they strongly emphasize that you know which button pad your controller has because the type of buttons that you'll be using with the button pad have to match. Otherwise, you're going to have buttons that you can't press down if you mix up tall buttons with tall button pads or buttons that rattle all over the place that you can't fully press down if you mix up short button pads with short buttons. The last common mistake I see with buttons involves this Z button. The Z button is placed into the controller shell like this. You want to make sure this metal piece is secured in this plastic slot. Otherwise the button just won't really fit, it won't click back, just generally not good. Now one of the biggest reasons for people opening up their controller is to install custom buttons. Another common mistake with the Z button is either losing this metal piece or trying to put a Z button in your controller without this metal piece inserted. This little metal piece is absolutely crucial. Unless you have a custom tactile Z button, you're going to need this metal piece in your controller in order for your button to reset its position every time you press it. Now, if you have a Battle Beaver Customs controller that has a tactile Z button, you wanna place your Z button in your shell without any metal piece in it. In order to remove the metal piece from your Z button, if it's the first time removing it, it's gonna be kind of jammed in there. So I find it best to use a pair of tweezers or pliers. Just gently pull up on the Z button and it'll just pop out like that. You don't want to pull it from the side, otherwise you'll risk bending this thing. And believe me, if you mess up, it's going to be very hard to find a replacement. Placing it in the Z button is as simple as finding this little slot right here. Now once you take out this metal piece, it's always going to be a little bit loose. So if you've ever taken out one of these in the past, just keep in mind that it is prone to fall out. So it's yet another part that you don't want to lose. It's really kind of hard to mess up on any other part of the controller. With the control sticks, you'll notice that the control stick has this little groove and this little notch up here. You just simply want to align it and place your control stick in. The C-stick has the exact same shape, meaning you can interchange these if you so choose. Now most people opening up their controller want to do some stick swap or other simple mod. They want to change their buttons or they want to shell swap with one of their spare controllers or with a friend's controller. To do any one of those things, you won't encounter any real problems other than the ones I've talked about. I wouldn't go ahead and try to mess with anything else on this board and doing so won't be necessary for basically every practical mod that a beginner will want to do. Again, if you've encountered something that I haven't gone over, please let me know and I'll get back to you either in a comment or, or in a future video. You basically want to make sure that your backing looks like this and that you don't have any button pads stuck to the board like you might commonly see. With older controllers, you kind of have to peel these guys off because they've been stuck on there for so many years. Doing the exact reverse process, looping this little piece back around its plastic. The only two common mistakes left are involving closing your controller. Now sometimes you might find that your vibration pops out. You want to be very very careful because these two wires are very prone to breaking and if you do you won't have any rumble. If your rumble does happen to pop out just place it right back into this middle slot with the stick facing up. Now if you don't do that and you place it in upside down it might be a reason for why your controller shell doesn't want to close. Now when it comes to closing your controller, this last part is absolutely crucial because it's something really easy to overlook. These two sliders on the back here lock into your controller's triggers here, which is how your controller registers your analog trigger inputs. Now when you're opening up your controller and you're fiddling around with everything in here, commonly you'll find that your trigger sliders go down. Now if they happen to be in any position other than up all the way, if they happen to be down like this, Your controller shell will fit just like normal, but you'll notice that your controller's trigger will be acting really weird. And that's because rather than being locked in with this little trigger slider, it's actually getting caught on top of it. So as long as you make sure that both sliders are in their full up position, popping your controller back in should be fine. You'll also find that the part of the board that your C-stick is in tends to like to pop out easily. So just make sure it's pressed in and this little peg is going through it and you shouldn't have any problems with closing your shell. After this, it's a matter of just getting all six of your screws back in your controller, closing it off and you'll be good. All right guys, I really hope that this covers everything that you might be fearing or anything that you should look out for when opening up your controller for the first time. It's really a shame when I hear people afraid of opening up their controllers and messing up something. Of course, like I said, you can't cover everything, but these are just a bunch of common problems that I keep hearing or seeing occur over and over. So by covering these, I hope to nullify some worries or some fears that you might have with opening up your controller. One last thing that I could warn you about is that a common reason to open up your controller in the first place is to do a shell swap. 
So if you're shell swapping with your friend or with another old controller that you have, sometimes you'll find that shells are a bit warped because they're made of plastic and they're pretty old. So you wanna make sure that you completely align your GameCube shell because otherwise you could mess up your screws in your shell because the last thing you wanna do is force your screw in too hard and crack your shell. All right guys, as always, I hope this video helped. Sorry, I know this is one of my more boring videos, but I just really wanted to get something out there in order to help the average viewer who just never opened up one of these controllers and might have some questions. Hopefully Hopefully this helped. If it did, please consider liking or subscribing. This has been Zenith, signing out.